Hi YouTube, 133 megahertz once again, this time bringing you some sort of uh, look more style repair video. Uh, this is a TI-83 plus graphing calculator I got recently from a thrift store for about five bucks. Um, uh, when I got it, unfortunately, when I put the batteries in and tried to turn it on, uh, it just displayed a, a single horizontal line on the LCD screen and most of the time it didn't do anything. But trying to repeatedly turn it on, sometimes it would come on, um, and, but the display was very glitchy all sorts of black lines and graphical oddities on, along the screen but uh, the calculator itself, I mean the, the computer, the operating system that runs on it seemed to run fine, just seemed to have uh, dis display problems so I tried to search the internet for you know the cause of the problem and a method of repair but I couldn't find anything about this, this sort of failure that this calculator had so I'm going to see if I can repair it on my own Okay, so I got it on, got it on and working now, sort of. Took me about five minutes to get it powered up. It's really finicky, and you can see how severe the display glitching is. Source all sorts of graphical oddities. I'll try to enter the memory menu. You can see it's all garbled. It's the about screen. It's totally unreadable. But aside from that. The calculator seems to work fine, you know, the operating system and stuff. Here's the back of it. I'm feeding six volts straight from that battery pack into the battery terminals. Here's the set ID CPU. This is the flash ROM. This is the RAM. This is a proprietary TI ASIC. And here's the display module. Hmm. I'm going to do the mode. What? Alpha S, which is the self test. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse. Here's the display test. This pattern is supposed to fill up the entire screen. All pixels on, all pixels off. You see, sometimes it's, it gets better. Let's try the memory menu again. It's a bit more readable now. But it's, just, it's still bad. Here's the about screen. So yeah, the calculator works fine underneath, but there are some serious display issues. So I'm going to check, I'm going to check uh, what is causing it. I already have a, a suspect with this, this flat flex cable that joins the, joins the display module with the rest of the calculator. I'm going to test it out and see what happens. Just to show you, I'm going to turn the calculator off. Second function on. It's off. And I'm going to try to turn it on again. And there you go, a single horizontal line. And it's not going to turn on anymore. Unless I start fiddling with it, you know, pressing off and on repeatedly, taking out the batteries, replacing them, sometimes it comes on, takes a good while, so yeah. Okay, so after checking the operating voltage of the calculator and seeing that it was correct, my prime suspect is this flex cable communicating the motherboard with the display module. I'm going to test continuity between some of its pins. I assume these two thicker ones are for power and the other ones are the data signals. So I'm going to start with these and we already have some high resistance in this connector. I don't expect it to be zero but it's already a bit high. Uh, this is a bit better. One of the data. That's definitely bad, I think. So I think I found the culprit. I think it's this. Look at that. It's full of resistance here and there. I'm going to try pushing it a bit. Let's see if I can get it to make a bit more contact. Let's see if I alter the values. 
Yeah, I think I actually did. So yeah, I'm going to try replacing this flat flex connector and see what happens. Actually, considering that it's got a, a relatively few pins and it doesn't travel much when the display module is in, in place in the calculator, I'm going to rip this whole thing apart and replace the thicker traces with this uh, stranded wire and replace the thinner ones with kinder wire. So let's see what happens. Ripping the flat flex cable from the motherboard. So I assume that the high resistance that this connector has, has developed uh, causes unwanted voltage drops at the screen module which make you know which makes all those graphical glitches and oddities. So by ripping this thing apart and replacing it with soldered wire should be much more reliable and should work correctly, I hope. It's coming off, it's kind of difficult. I don't want to rip this thing to pieces, so I gotta go slowly. It's coming apart. Ah, there we go. Now to clean this crap and solder some wires to it. So here's the crappy flex cable completely off. As you can see, I have cleaned the, the contacts, the gooey mess that the flex lift on the contacts with, uh, with uh, Q-tips and alcohol. So it's ready for soldering. I'm going to use thick stuff for the two power wires and the thin kind of stuff for the single wires. So after about 30 minutes, this is how it turned out. Thin kinder strips for the signal lines and thick wire for the power lines. So I have hooked it up. We have it hooked up and we're gonna turn it on and see. Ray. Oh it's all clear now. Look at that. So it was the flex cable after all. Let's see the self test. Do the display test. Yeah, it's all perfect now. Yeah, so it's time to put it back together. So there you go. For me, a nice TI-83 Plus graphing calculator for five bucks, great score. And now you know, if your, if your TI calculator starts displaying glitchy graphics and all sorts of graphical oddities, check the flex cable. It's a good chance that it has, it has gone bad and just rip it out and solder wires into place. It, it's not difficult to solder 17 wires so you can have your calculator going back again. So thanks for watching, take care!